Liquid is a sidechain of Bitcoin. And so a sidechain means that you can move Bitcoin kind of onto the Liquid network and off of it, and it will retain its identity as Bitcoin. And when you move Bitcoin onto Liquid, what's physically happening actually is that you're transferring the coins into the custody of this federation of mutually distrusting peers across the globe. The problems that Liquid solves are that it gives you a way to have a separate blockchain where you can deploy cool technology projects, and I'll give some examples in a sec, without necessarily deploying a whole separate currency. The tension that we kind of recognized in 2014 in the blockchain space was that to do cool stuff on Bitcoin was very slow, even back then, and you were limited in what you could do. You couldn't do like crazy cryptographic experiments on Bitcoin because the system needs to keep working and you can't be using it as a toy. But conversely, you want to innovate, right? You want to build cool new stuff. And the way to do that seemed to be that you had to take the Bitcoin source code and fork it and create your own altcoin, basically, and say, on this altcoin, I'm going to do all this cool stuff. But then when you do that, you potentially expose yourself to legal or regulatory risk. You expose the world to a lot of kind of moral hazard. You create this new market that's extremely illiquid and require people who want to use their system to interact with that market in order to get on and off of your system. And so you are limiting your own adoption by doing this, and you're also kind of creating a honeypot for scammers and for people who want to do pump and dump schemes, who will, will move into these illiquid markets and just screw all of your retailers. So the idea behind a sidechain is, well, maybe we could create a separate blockchain, and we could do some cool stuff. We could introduce multi-asset support. We could introduce confidential transactions, which hides all of the amounts and all of the asset types within transactions on the system. We could introduce some new opcodes. We could introduce covenants, which lets you do some things like vaults or potentially some DeFi-like things. You can have reliably timed one-minute blocks. That's kind of a cool thing that some people want. Is In Bitcoin, the blocks come on average every 10 minutes, but it's a, it's a stochastic process. And you can do things that are newer or deploy cryptography that's under iteration because you have the ability to change quickly. And you can do so without creating a new market, basically without introducing all this moral hazard. And even better than just not creating a new market, you actually can bring people in from the Bitcoin market. So this potentially gives you a platform where you could do vaults, you could do derivatives, you could try like DeFi kind of things using Bitcoins, which you can't do directly on the Bitcoin network because it's missing certain script primitives that you would need to deploy something like that. And it doesn't have multi-asset support and never will, right? What we've seen actually is that the technology platform underlying Liquid is called Elements. There's actually been a few things that have moved from Elements to Bitcoin after we proved them on elements. So the op CSV, which is a script op code that's used for implementing time locks in lightning payment channels to make sure that if your counterparty drops that you can get your coins out of the network, is one example. One cool example that, that not a lot of people are aware of, SegWit itself was actually deployed on elements before it moved to Bitcoin. And when it moved to Bitcoin, it was radically overhauled. The SegWit on Bitcoin looks nothing like a SegWit that was on elements. And then it went the other way. We took the new SegWit from Bitcoin and pulled it into Elements. So you can take the existing Bitcoin ecosystem and the existing Bitcoin market and potentially introduce all sorts of cool new innovations and prove those. 